Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another thing where I talk about things. Today, we're going to talk about mods and art and making money on those things and then a couple aspects related to it. Uh, we talked about mods in the last video, or you know, modding Bethesda games in general. Um, but actually, just recently, like this week, Steam has released a, a deal where you can sell mods on their Steam Workshop. And this has met a, a fair amount of resistance, and, and there's some good reasons for it why. Some people are a little bit paranoid about things. But, um, but I find it particularly interesting because of the, the alarming perspective this gives to the, well, to a couple of things. I mean, uh, the biggest thing about it, I mean, most people are talking about like, well, you know, maybe mod makers will put all their stuff behind paywalls. And they're really upset about that because up until now, we've always, you know, you just go and you download the mods for free. You could donate to the mods or maybe some guys had like Patreons and you could go and you could donate to their Patreons. And, and that was more or less fine because everybody still got the mod at the end of the day. They didn't have a paywall. And so some people are worried about the paywall thing. Um, personally, I'm not as stressed out about the paywall stuff. I mean, uh, a lot of mods, it's, what's funny about mods and trying to put them behind a paywall is that uh, right away, I think that what they discovered on like day one is that mods are like super easy to pirate. They're small file sizes. I mean, like all you do is you just take the files and you just put them in your data folder and they run. It's not like there's any kind of DRM or anything like that. So I think already the Steam Workshop is just littered with, with pirated mods. People who didn't want to sell their mods that have had them stolen and just uploaded to the Steam Workshop. Or people who wanted to put their stuff behind paywalls that's been stolen and uploaded to, you know, torrent sites and everything. So, so I mean, like, the piracy thing is pretty much undermined any potential for any sort of, like, there's really no control here. The whole thing is just a mess. Um, so that much I worry about less. I mean, uh, like, we'll, we'll see how that, you know, you could see how that develops, but I, I, I don't even mind. I mean, like, the whole idea of, like, well, you know, what if I just sell my mods? It really doesn't, that, re that one really doesn't bother me so much. I mean, like, if they're priced reasonably, uh, I know, like I say, the, the paywall thing, people, it bothers some people. Um, personally, I think that the donation deal works if the donation stuff is being advertised. I think that a lot of a lot of mod makers have been skittish though about the whole concept because the idea of making mods it's illegal it's an illegal gray area. Nobody knows if it's legal or not. You could make a case that it's legal. I, I mean uh, they have what's called a right of first sale which is when you buy a product you should be able to modify this product uh, you know do things with the product and then you can resell it and you can actually make mods for said product like you know if you run a skateboard shop you could build your own skateboard wheels, you know, and you could sell these skateboard wheels, you know, they're meant to modify the existing skateboards, and you don't have to pay royalties to anybody, I mean, like, as long as you don't call them, you know, whatever brand skateboard wheels, as long as it's your own brand, and you advertise it as your own brand, you don't have to pay royalties to anybody. So, you know, modding stuff is perfectly legal, because a, a modification to an existing product is actually not competitive with that existing product. Uh, so, for example, like a Skyrim mod, like suppose you want a mod that makes the breasts on the, all the female characters uh, bounce around so spasmodically that they slap you in the face every time you jump. You know, well, that's out there. You can download that. Um, and, and the case that you, you ask is, uh, should this be legal? Well, if you look at it, uh, this, this breast flailing mod, um, it doesn't really replace the original game. I mean, you have to download, you have to buy the original game to use this mod. The mod is actually not competitive with Skyrim at all. In fact, it promotes Skyrim because maybe people would buy Skyrim specifically so they can download, download this breast flailing mod and they can install it and they can watch their character get slapped in the face with their breasts every time they jump. And, you know, so, so you can make a case that there's, good, there's a right of first sale here and that mods are not competitive with the original product. They are, in fact, uh, beneficial to it. And, and this is actually the reason why, for the most part, most companies don't screw with mod makers. Because there's, there's a case in the favor of mod makers, there's, there's a likelihood that they are fine. And not only are they fine, but they should probably be able to sell their mods and make money on it on their own time. Um, but they, they haven't screwed with it because there's really no money in it. I mean, like, you know, Bethesda could sue all the mod makers, but all they would do is just devastate their own player base. And then, uh, I mean, they would anger their players, they would devastate their own player base, they would devastate the mod community, which would cut off a ton of interest in their games. I mean, a lot of people probably... I, I personally wouldn't download another Bethesda game. Not another, I wouldn't download another Elder Scrolls game if I knew that I couldn't get access to mods, because I always find their games just a little bit boring without mods. Uh, I download them specifically because I know that there's a really good modding community that'll make the whole thing a lot more fun once I, you know, after I get acclimated to the vanilla stuff, I'll download a bunch of other stuff. Um, 
so, so, so I mean, they just don't, they, they haven't messed with it. But what the Steam thing is that they're doing, uh, what they're doing is they're saying, okay, you know, you can sell your mods, but we take a 75% cut. And, and that, like, that's alarming. Because a 75% cut, I mean, like, if they asked for a 30% cut, that would be skinning a bit. I mean, or not even a bit, I mean, that's just kind of like outright skinning. When you look at actual royalty negotiations and how much people usually have to pay in royalties when they're working with a brand, like even if you assume that these people are somehow tied up in the in the Bethesda brand and that they're encroaching in it and that they should pay royalties, 75% is, that's not like a rational amount to ask for. That's, that's like robber baron stuff. This is, they're exploiting the fact that Steam is, it's not really a monopoly, but it kind of is. I mean, uh, like, where else are you gonna get this service? There's, there's nowhere else that provides it, so Steam is the only place you can do that. So they say, if you want to do this through Steam, it's gonna take 75% of your money. Every dollar you make, we'll flip you a quarter. I mean, yeah. And this is wacky, because the mod makers, they do 100% of the work. To think that they would only get 25% of the money is just insane. And, and I don't know why any mod makers would go for it. Some of them already have, and they have been dogpiled on and absolutely buried in criticism because of it. Uh, but the guys who are opting in for this 25% revenue share are are being taken for a ride. Uh, I mean, like, I get the impression that Bethesda and Steam are banking on the assumption that mod makers are, are just stupid children who, who don't understand exactly how much money they are giving away. Like, think about that, really. Like, if you could go out and you sold lemonade, and you, you know, like you sold 100 things of lemonade, and you had to give 75% of the profits away, you would make 25 bucks. I mean, for like selling 100 units of lemonade. And, and suppose you made all the lemonade yourself. I mean, like, yeah, sure, you bought the lemons from a farm, but but like, why, why would you give money to the farm? Why would you give 75% of the money to the lemon farm after you already bought the, you know, you bought the lemons already. You bought the lemons. Why are you giving 75% of the profits to the lemon farm after you already bought the lemons? It's the same thing. It's like you already, you bought the game. You made the mod for the game. You're not competing with the game. You're the one who put all the work into the mods. Why would you give 75% of the money away to Bethesda and Steam? Um, I think that mostly it's probably Bethesda because as far as I understand, Steam currently sells hats. And, and like if you do hat sales, like if you sell hats to people, they take a 5% cut of those sales. So Steam has probably taken some really reasonable amount. Like 5%, that's a really reasonable royalty amount. Like if somebody asked me, you know, like if somebody set me up on a platform on YouTube, like YouTube right now actually takes a pretty exploitative amount. They take like a 45% cut of all ad revenue. Um, so if somebody set me up, if they're like, hey, Greg, we'll take like a 5% cut of your ad revenue, I would be on that. I would, because that's a, that's a good royalty deal. 5%, that's way better than this 45% that YouTube's doing right now. Um, but again, YouTube's kind of a, it's a monopoly, so they sort of, they sort of get to decide if they want to take a 45% cut, then, you know, you could go and you could take your, take your videos somewhere else, but nowhere else is going to offer you the, uh, it, like hardly any revenue at all. Or, or if they are, they're a much less efficient platform. They don't have the same viewer base. So, so YouTube kind of relies on its monopoly to offer these very poor uh, royalty rates. Um, so 5% is not too weird. I mean, like for the hat sales, 5% makes sense. Um, unless I'm mistaken, maybe it's not that. But 5% but is normal. And so I guess that maybe based on that assumption, it might be Bethesda that's taking some just ludicrous cut out of the whole thing. Um, but point being though, that if, if you're a mod maker and you sign on for this 75-25 split, um, I mean, like, you are a fool. I mean, I just don't, I don't want to be, I, I just have to be blunt about it. I mean, like, I don't blame you for wanting money for a lot of hard work. I know how much work goes into these mods. I mean, I, I crack open the editor, I go through stuff. I mean, I know how hard it is. I mean, some of some of these guys are like actually doing scripting. You know, they sit down and they write this stuff out at their computer. It's a devotion of love. They do this assuming that they're not going to get anything out of it. They don't know if it's going to take off. I mean, uh, art is art is hard, and when you do it really well, like when you're a really fantastic artist, people don't see the seams. I mean, they don't see all the stuff in the background. They don't notice where things went wrong and all the bug fixing that you went through. That like, if you make a new suit of armor and it doesn't clip. Like, nobody looks at that and they go, wow, you know, how fantastic, you know, like you went through all... Uh, because people only notice if it clips. Like, if the armor clips, if there's a lot of clipping issues, people notice that, then they get upset. And they're like, oh, this armor is bored. So really good art, really good work, it looks seamless. People don't notice, they don't realize how much work went into it. So it's tough. 
I understand that. I understand mod makers wanting to earn money off of that kind of work. Um, but but the 25% cut thing, man, they're they're just it's just a slap in the face. I mean they're they're insulting your intelligence is what they're doing. This is not a this is not a real cut. This is this is not. I, I mean this is not a royalties agreement. They're basically telling you that you're an idiot and they're just running off with your money. Um, man, it's terrible. So. That's my, I mean, that's kind of my take on the whole thing, is I understand where some of the, some of the politics would come in, but this, this whole Steam Workshop thing where they're offering, where they're offering such a, just a, they're just, they're relying on the Monopoly thing, and it's, it's a robber baron deal. I mean, like, you're just, take, you're getting taken to the cleaners. If you opt in for this thing, you're just getting taken to the, taken to the cleaners. And I don't think that anyone's going to be, I mean, like, unless you just go absolutely viral to some ridiculous degree, uh, you... Are not going to be able to make any kind of realistic profit with that sort of cut. A 25% cut is just, I mean, like, really, I encourage you, if you do this, sit down, calculate how much money you would make before they take their cut, then calculate how much money you got. I, I mean, I really want people to sit down, if they're going to use this program, I want them to sit down and really get a feel for the loss. I mean, I do this every now and then when we look at, when we look at YouTube, like, I'll sit down and I just, it, you know, it always bugs me. Just, just get a sense for that before you opt into this program. But what I think is going to wind up happening is it's probably going to be a really great opportunity for pirates. Like I say, people who are going to steal mods and then upload them and then make money off of them even though, even though they have no rights to make money off of them. And the mod makers aren't going to be able to do crap because the, the, the US copyright system doesn't really care about anyone without the money to afford a lawyer. You can send your DMCA complaints, but I mean like... You know, they'll just refute them, or they'll they'll agree, and then they'll just upload under another name or whatever. There's going to be no control. No, no independent artist really benefits much from from copyright law. Not in this perspective. I mean, you do a little bit. Like if a large company kind of picks on you, and there's money enough to justify going to court, you benefit somewhat from copyright law. But copyright law really doesn't protect any small people. It's not going to help these mod makers. Um, this whole system is just stacked so hard against mod makers. It's it's just. Uh, I mean, it's concerning. Like it really is. Like I say, it looks it looks like a robber baron kind of thing. It just it just it's just kind of gross, and it's really worrying. Um, but anyway, all that said, though, I've been thinking a lot uh, about uh, just kind of art in general and prices for art. I mean, like I had someone come into the stream not too long ago, and they asked if I could. They asked to, if they could commission me to draw something for them, and I kind of was like, well, you know, I don't know. I guess my time. It's it's tough to come up with prices and figure out how to assign worth to your own work when you get into stuff. Um, I mean, one of the things that you get into is that your time has a certain amount of opportunity cost. Opportunity cost is basically like if you spent an hour working on something, like maybe you make $15 within that hour. And so if you do something else, like so you could you could work at this one job and get $15 an hour, or you could get up and go to McDonald's and make like $8 per hour. And, and some people, they kind of get, they, they don't think about opportunity cost and they assume like, well, if I'm working at McDonald's, then that's, you know, I'm earning money, you know, that's better than not earning money, but you don't realize that you'd be better off, you know, you'd be better off anywhere else, like earning some, earning more money from some other place because your opportunity cost is higher than, like you have a, you have an opportunity cost of, uh, of, you know, $7 or whatever, because you could earn 15, but you earned eight at McDonald's. And so opportunity cost, you lost, you lost money. Um, so art's kind of this, the same way, but it's even harder because you kind of have to give a price quote. And then you kind of look at things and you say, like, oh, it'll take me this long to do this thing if you take your money ahead of time. And they've done some studies trying to figure out how exactly is the best way to pay artists so that you get the most productivity out of them for, for you know, what you want to do. And they find that one of the best ways to handle this is actually just to give the artist the money and then let them go. And, uh, and the catch is that, of course, you get them on a contract because you don't want to give them, like, here's a thousand dollars and then just be, like, a month later, so where's my thing? And they'll be like, oh... I didn't get to it yet. No, oh, that's not good. You can't do that. But if you just give them the money and you have a contract and you say, okay, you know, you'll do this, and if you don't make the deadline, you get back the money, um, then then that actually works the best. They find because then the artist isn't worried about the money. They're not stressed out about it. They've already got it. Uh, they know that whatever they do, they've got the money. So they'll get to work and they'll be they'll be a lot more optimistic about the whole thing and they'll kind of pour themselves into it and give you their give you their all. And so every now and then, but I, when I've taken commissions, I kind of tend to just let people sort of decide when they want to pay me. Sometimes they pay me ahead of time, and then other times they'll pay me afterward, one way or the other. I don't quibble about it too much. Um, it's sort of a, it's all kind of a psychological thing when it comes right down to it. 
Um, but it's just sort of a weird, weird situation when you get into subjective stuff like this. Like I say, the mod making is a good example, but also drawing, art, making music, making videos, trying to figure out how much your time is worth and whether or not you really even should be using a platform like YouTube. Um, I believe that YouTube, in my opinion, I think that a platform like YouTube is actually pretty it's fairly exploitative, but it's hard to say though because YouTube is also not especially profitable. Um, in spite of all the massive cuts they're taking, they're not really raking in the money. Uh, they're still they're still suffering tons of losses, mostly because of copyright law. Um, I mean, there's so just so much crap. They get ranked, uh, you know rolled into lawsuits all the time, and uh, and just get on everyone's cases. And then the advertisers don't want to be on like you know ridiculous videos, and so they pay less for being on ridiculous videos, so on and so forth. So the self-publishing thing is always interesting because you never know whether or not you're getting the right amount of money. Um, but but ultimately, in the end, I find that that with any kind of art, you you really the only people who make good art are people who are able to do it just for the love of doing it. And this is one reason why I look at this whole uh, sell your mods on on Steam thing. And I'm not really alarmed about I'm not really alarmed about people putting their stuff behind a paywall. Some people might do that. I think that actually it's not the best way to go about things. I think that the best way to do things is to is to not really establish a paywall. I mean, you can do sort of like a, I mean, we've talked about this where maybe I'll like as I'm as I'm using Flash, we're getting work done faster. And so what I'm thinking I might do is I might upload stuff early to Patreon and be like, here's your early release. And then if people just share it with other people, it's like, that's fine. You know, you guys are patrons. Uh, this is your video. I made it, you know, this is your early release video. I made it for you. You can do what you want with it. If you want to share it with the general public, that's cool. And, you know, and that'll be the approach that I take because the point is not really to jealously hoard the work and then only give it to people who paid for it, but for everybody to inevitably see it and then to, you know, and you bring in more people that way. And, you know, and to reward the people that are supporting you, but but not to, you know, what can I say? There are people who want to support you, but they don't have enough money. Or, you know, there's people who, you know, people are going to, if people are going to support you, then they're going to support you, and that's just kind of how it is. Um, I don't know. So it's all about confidence, I think, ultimately, is what it comes down to. Is uh, As you start to think about money a lot, and you worry, like, is my work really worth this? Or is my time really worth this? I mean, if I ask for $15 per hour on a commission, or if I think it'll take me three hours, if I ask for $45, is that fair? Uh, you start to ask yourself a lot of these questions. And the important thing is just to have confidence and a certain amount of love for your own work. Um, I mean, nothing that you produce is ever going to be perfect. And everything that you release, I mean, once it's gone, it's gone. You know, you release it and it's... You'll never be able to fix the imperfections, and and as you grow, you'll always find things that were terrible about your old art. I flip through a lot of my old stuff, and I just cringe. I hate a lot of my old work, but it's out there. It's out there, and we, we grew an audience kind of around it, and we continue to work. And I'm doing the same thing with the Mentally Advanced series. I'm like teaching myself how to draw as I do things, and so some of the first installments of the new the negative mentally advanced series has been ugly as sin but it's getting a little bit better we're gonna have animation in the upcoming episode i'm really thrilled about that just little amounts of animation but you know still animation i never you know i never really thought that uh, i would be making actual animated products of any sort back back when i first started doing this thing um it all kind of started off as a hobby and then i found out that i just really really enjoyed it so your mod makers will probably wind up doing the same thing. I mean, even if this Steam thing smooths out, a lot of mod makers will still, the good ones, will do it for the love of doing it. You'll be able to find them. People will still spread them around by word of mouth, and there will be good mod makers out there. There will be a lot of crap. I mean, there will be people up there who are like, red reskin of sword, and it'll just be like a single, like a flat red texture or whatever, and it'll be like, one dollar. You pay a dollar for this. Uh, fortunately, one thing that Steam has done is they've got a refund policy where if you dislike the mod, like 24 hours after you buy it, you can get a refund, which is really good. Um, but, but still, the more alarming thing that I see with all of this is just the way that these... It's the revenue cut. I mean, the royalties thing. This is what I worry about a lot more, is you find that the internet's getting smaller and smaller. And self-publishing, it's very alluring, it's, it's fantastic. I think it's great that artists can get out there and be noticed when normally they wouldn't be. I mean, you can grow up in the Midwest or some tiny little town, and if you've got an internet connection, a little bit of luck and maybe some money for advertising, 
you can get a fan base, you know, you can get noticed. There are guys on like, I mean, like, uh, uh, I know Foss and I during the streams, we kind of grouse a little bit jealously of other artists that, you know, like making $100,000 a year for their, you know, they do like a, a bi-weekly comic or something like that and earn $100,000 a year. And, and we grouse a little bit about it, but but I'm glad that people can do that, you know, regardless of, regardless of, you know, the jealousy, it's all kind of like, it's still, it's uplifting. I mean, we're jealous of it, but it's, it's good to know that people can do it, that it happens, you know, that there's, that there's hope for other people who want to do the same thing. But a lot of platforms are getting smaller, and it kind of worries me, too, that Patreon is the only platform that really also supports this kind of thing, because there was a point when Patreon sent us an email, and they were talking about you know, their investors wanted them to raise the royalties that they that they took from the uh, people. I think they take like 5% right now, and their investors wanted them to take like 15% or something like that. So, you know, Patreon would have taken a much larger group, a large, much larger amount of the money that you got donated to you. Um, they decided not to do that, but you kind of look at this and it's sort of like, well, what if YouTube came along one day and just said, you know what, we're going to start taking 60% instead of 45%. What would anybody do? I mean, where would they go? What, what would you What would you do? Nothing. What if Patreon came along and they said that same thing? You know, like, YouTube takes a 45% cut, we could take a 45% cut, and they just started taking a 45% cut. What would you do? You could, you could leave Patreon and then go to where? I mean, like, donations through PayPal or whatever? It, it hasn't been, I mean, we, we went that route, but I have to admit, Patreon has been a fantastic platform for us, and it's pretty much been uh, our, our source of life since we moved over to it. I mean, uh, uh, Google, YouTube has been too unstable. Patreon is just nice and stable. Like, people support us through that. And so you look at Steam, too, and it's kind of like Steam is demanding 75% of your money. Where else can you sell this stuff through this through this system? I mean, nowhere. There's not any other... I mean, you could, you could go to Origin if you ever want to work for EA, if you think that they would give you a better deal. And if they, if they ever got started on that. But EA will never do that. EA will never give you a better deal. They are notorious as a company for giving you worse deals on everything. Um, I don't think EA is going to improve. So, this is the thing that's got me worried, is the internet is actually kind of shrinking. And they've done some studies on this where they've shown that more and more of the internet is starting to get concentrated into just really huge websites, you know, Tumblr, uh, Yahoo, Google, uh, Facebook, like the internet's just, the internet's starting to get smaller. And it may feel bigger, but it really is, it's shrinking. And so there's a few core websites that are pretty much dominating the whole internet. And so they have a ton of leverage and a ton of control. And if they decide that they just want to gouge you, I mean, what are you going to do? You get into this Robert Barron stuff with like, with the 75% revenue share and, and your option is to be gouged. You know, you can be gouged or you can make no money. And I, and I think that some, some of the mod makers are kind of looking at that and they say, well, previously I would have done it for free and this 25% revenue cut is kind of a ripoff, but that's better than nothing. So I'll, I'll go with that. I don't mind if Bethesda makes 75% of the money and does 0% of the work. Uh, you know, they just go with it because they kind of have no other choice. And what I'm worried most about too is that in the legislative climate in the U.S. that there's really not going to be any kind of... Uh, protection for anybody. I mean, like, most likely, I feel like, I feel like if we ever got our legislators' attention on this stuff, the only thing that would happen is that they'd show up and, and they'd be like, oh, okay, well, if we have to do something, what, what should we do? And they would turn to, like, you know, the major companies that are doing the gouging. And so the companies that are doing the gouging would be like, oh, well, we'd prefer if you just stay out of it, but if you have to do something, make the price gouging legal. And so they'd turn around and they'd say, oh, okay, well, price gouging is now legal on the internet. And that would be it. We would just be screwed. That's kind of my. That's kind of the faith I have in our government. That's it's very cynical, but, 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 I don't know. They're all old, and they're like 20 years behind everything. So I just feel like we have this kind of emerging issue with monopolies and robber baron politics on the internet. And so if you show up and you're like, yeah, so you know, robber barons are starting to take over the internet. They just be like, oh, that's great. I'm invested in robber barons. I am one of the robber barons. I actually own a company. I, I'm a chairman on Google. You know, they get into that. Um, that's the thing that's really scary is when you find out our congressman like oh Walmart's destroying everyone Oh, I'm a chairman on Walmart. That's wonderful. We're making so much money with all this destruction oh. Yeah, so I don't know But but art 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 is always one of these really just difficult careers everyone's I Don't know it's always it's always so strange when you read about like 
just the battles that go on between like artists and the people that rely on the art is they always they always want to underpay the artists and the artists have to kind of like band together because because there's so many starving artists there's so many people who are just kind of just just trying to get up there trying to get by and so you know it's easy to find people who will do work for less even though they're shooting themselves in the foot and they can never live for the money that they're that they're accepting you know it's just weird and of course and of course some of them are just underconfident and it's not like they it's not like they're trying to undercut everybody. They're just they just don't believe in themselves, you know? You're like, how much how much do you think it would cost to get me this picture? And they'll be like, oh, how many hours of work with them? Like, 24 hours of work, solid. Ooh, I'll do it for five dollars. You know, and it's it's kinda like because they just think that their work is worthless. It's a hobby, you know. I'll, I'll, five dollars, okay, yeah. And I don't know, confidence. Confidence is a big part of being successful, but also I uh, you know, get this just like I say, just get this weird dynamic. Um but anyway, I don't know how it'll pan out. I don't have a lot of like ultimatums or anything like that about the whole Steam sales thing. Um, I, I mean, it's kind of a broader, it's, it's sort of a, it's a, it's a look a bit at the way that art on the internet is kind of shaping up. Because I've heard that they did this on DeviantArt as well, where apparently you can use points to commission artists to do work on DeviantArt. And, and so you give money to DeviantArt to get these points and the artists will do work for like, you know, a dollar and they'll do like hardcore commissions for what is basically a dollar in DeviantArt bucks and stuff like this. Because there's so many artists on there that, I mean like they'll be decent artists but they don't really, you know, they don't really know their own, own worth or they just, they're just like, oh wow, a thousand, a thousand DeviantArt bucks, that's a lot of numbers, that's a high number. It's only worth like a buck, a dollar. So just that you know, you can get confused. It'll be like you know, young young people or just inexperienced people, and I, you know, I don't know, weird. It's kind of like I said, just sort of a small look at the direction that that um, you know the internet's shrinking to, a little too much, maybe. No. But anyway, though, uh, I suppose that'll be it for today. So I will catch you guys later.